This video has been funded in part by the Guild via Patreon. Check out the links in the description or at the end of this video for more details. Hello everybody, my name is Chris Gildart and welcome back to another Pros vs Cons mini review. I have always wanted to get into Fire Emblem as a series, but I just find that I need to be in the right mood for a tactics style game. Whether it's Disgaea, Fire Emblem, or any other tactical JRPG, once I am in the mood for that type of game, it is hard to get me to stop. That being said, I am always in the mood for a Warriors game, and while I was playing through Fire Emblem Three Houses, I kept thinking what a great setting this would be for a Warriors game. Well, my prayers were answered when Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes was announced. A brand new Warriors release set in the world of Fodlin and following the characters we know and love from the original game. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and act like a longtime fan of the Fire Emblem franchise. However, I am going to act like a longtime fan of the Warriors franchise as well as a fan of Fire Emblem Three Houses. I only played through one route in Three Houses though, siding with the Empire and romancing Edelgard, one of my favorite characters. I never played the DLC and only went halfway through a Blue Lions route. So I will admit that although I say I am a major fan of Three Houses, I have not experienced everything that game has to offer. And if I have to say why, it's partly because I feel like I got the best ending for me and every other playthrough won't quite hit the same as before. I have a feeling that sentiment will be different with Fire Emblem Warriors 3 Hopes. As a fan of Warriors games, even if I got the best possible ending for myself for the first playthrough, I will still want to play it over and over again until I unlock everything that I can. But I do want to put things into perspective with this mini review. I played through to the end of every route in the demo, but I decided to stick with Edelgard and the Black Eagles for my first playthrough. I also haven't finished the story before doing this mini review because there's a lot to do here and I have been taking it all in. Now the reason I want to set the stage as to where I am in the game is so that you understand why I'm making the points that I'm making and how I got to the verdict that I do at the end of this video. But before we get into all of that, don't forget to give this video a like, comment with your thoughts below, and of course subscribe if you haven't already. Alright, it's time to take a look at Fire Emblem Warriors 3 Hopes. Ready? Set pros. The game feels perfect. The combat is exactly what you'd want out of a sequel to the original Fire Emblem Warriors. Y is your normal attack, X is your strong attack, A is your warrior's attack or Muso, B is dash. It all feels so natural. If it weren't for the fact that I know that there are going to be some people who are new to this format of gameplay, I wouldn't think that you'd need a tutorial for this game. What is nice though is that the tutorial is presented in a much better way than many other games. During the first battle, you'll go base to base and slowly be introduced to each gameplay mechanic. You can also choose the style in which you want to play the game, whether you want the tutorial windows to pop up, which even as a longtime Warriors fan, it would be good to do on your first playthrough so that you can understand the various mechanics that are unique to Three Hopes. But you can also choose between the classic or casual style, where in the former, the characters you take into battle could in fact die for good. Maybe sometime I'll do a Three Hopes Nuzlocke playthrough. Some mechanics that you might be used to from previous Warriors games would would be things like pairing your units together. When you're running around the stage, you can pair one character with another. The paired character will sit on the sidelines and sometimes will come out for an additional attack or help block incoming ones. They'll also appear for joint warriors attacks and if you paired yourself with one of the four playable characters that you get for a stage, you can swap on the fly, making use of the weapon triangle system that Fire Emblem is famous for. Paired characters can also more easily increase bond, which will provide you with character interactions as well. You can also unlock and change the classes of all characters. This is how you swap weapons similar to what we've seen in Dynasty Warriors 8 and Samar Warriors 5. Some characters have special classes like the Armored Lord for Edelgard or the Flugel for Shez. Some classes do share movesets, but there is a decent amount of variety here that you won't get bored playing as the same character over and over again. Some of the more unique sides of Three Hopes actually happens outside of battle and take inspiration or direct mechanics from Three Houses. First off, you can obtain special bonuses if you have a save file from Three Houses or Fire Emblem Warriors. These aren't anything special, but they can give you a head start on your inventory. You're given a lot of different facilities that can help you out like a blacksmith station to buy new weapons or reforge old ones, to a training area where you can use gold to level up characters, or set out to train multiple characters to help work on class experience as well. All of these facilities can be expanded by using materials which you can find in stages or buy from vendors. Now, one thing I will say is that most people who are interested in Three Hopes 
folks would be those who have already played and enjoyed Three Houses. The story of that game was impeccable and really drove a lot of people to replay it over and over. So how does the story of Three Hopes stack up so far? Well, I'll be honest, it doesn't quite hit the same way that Three Houses does, but it is still really good. If Three Houses is a 5 stars, then Three Hopes is a 4 and a half. It may be due to it treading similar waters. You see, Three Hopes is neither a sequel or a prequel. It also doesn't happen during the five-year time skip of Three Houses. Three Hopes is like a parallel universe. It follows the same story with slight differences that give it its own identity. One thing I do like is how each character's personality is so perfectly identifiable. You know how one character will react to a situation versus another. The writers truly know how to build their characters and give them their own goals and backgrounds. As you see characters in cutscenes and conversations, you'll start to feel like you've known these characters all your life. One thing I will say is that I actually really enjoyed building relationships in this game. Most of the time, these relationship mechanics feel tacked on and I only really pay attention to specific characters. But in both Three Houses and Three Hopes, I found myself wanting to see how every character interacts with each other. If you build up multiple characters' relationships far enough with each other, you'll unlock special paralogue battles. These are really cool because it shows these characters fighting battles outside of the main story and really gives them a time to shine and provide more of an insight into who they are. All in all, I love every aspect of the story and the characters of this game. Not to mention the fact that this is completely voiced in English and you'll want to set it to English. I know there are Japanese purists who will want to change it to be the more anime fitting voices, but 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 trust me, you do not want to hear Edelgard in Japanese. <laughs> Who are you, and what have you done with my waifu? This brings me to how the stages play out. I did a video on the demo that we got on June 8th, and in that video I explained that you will have a path from your base to the main battle of the chapter. There are side missions that you can take on as you make your way to the main mission. When you clear the side missions, there are other rewards in the borders of the land that can range from someone giving you a gift to a band of thieves that you'll have to take out before you are given the reward. If there is a reward that requires a small skirmish beforehand, you'll see it on the map with a number next to it. This means that you need to take on that specific battle within that many stages. Otherwise, it'll be locked out for completion. Another thing that I mentioned in the previous video is that once you complete the main mission of that chapter, you can't go back. But that is wrong. It says this in the tutorial, but you just can't go back to the map and get the additional rewards. You can, however, replay missions and side missions as auxiliary battles through the Record Keeper. This is essentially this game's free mode, and I am glad that we have a way to go back and replay stages. The nice thing about this is that you can replay stages with the current roster of characters that you have unlocked. And with that said, that's all the pros I have so far. Now it's time for the Wrath of the Cons! Let's start things off with something I noticed while playing Three Houses as well. This game is essentially using the assets from that, and you can tell because the resolution does not look like 1080p. I know the Switch is a weaker console to even that of the PS4 and Xbox One, but I know that the Switch is fully capable of rendering smooth 1080p polygons in many any other games. Hell, even the first Fire Emblem Warriors had a better resolution than this. It's really apparent during conversations when you can see the Jaggies all over the place. I know for a fact that the Switch can output a much higher quality visual than this, and it's disappointing that we don't get to see that with either Three Houses or Three Hopes. I will also say that the costume options feel very limited. Even though you can pick what your character will wear in both camp and in battle, you don't have the freedom you usually have with most Warriors games. There is a way to wear the academy clothes into battle after the time skip, but to do that you need to change the camp outfits to the academy and the battle outfits to their unique look. I don't understand why we don't just have a list of outfits for in battle versus in camp. I also do think that it would have been cool if you mastered a class that you also unlock that outfit for use with any other class. It's not essential, but it is a cool idea. It would also give me more of a reason to go for mastering everything other than my rampant OCD. I'll also mention that during conversations, character portraits will appear when they speak. The thing is, the portrait doesn't always match the outfit that you have equipped. It would be nice if this actually switched with your costume. I am also still hopeful that you can either unlock or buy the Three Houses time skip 
skip outfits because Edelgard in that full red armor is just the most beautiful thing you can ever see. There are also a handful of characters that I noticed that aren't playable. I have had Randolph and his sister Felch join my army as well as Kaspar's father Leopold. Considering everything is class based for movesets, you would think that these characters would be playable, even if they were more like the unique NPCs of Samurai Warriors 5 and they don't have a preferred class. These would be great to be able to play as. And the last thing I'll mention that you'd likely notice even just watching this mini review is that there are a lot of similar looking stages. I would have liked to see more variety by like chapter 4, but I am in chapter 8 and it still looks all the same. I also want to mention that I feel weird not being able to see foot soldier health bars. In Three Hopes, every foot soldier looks the same. I've ran into issues where I think my allies are actually the enemies, but attacking them does nothing. I know you can tell by the color, but sometimes my brain just doesn't register that. It could also be the fact that I'm playing as the Black Eagles and that red has always been classified as the enemy. So seeing foot soldiers dressed all in red with no health health bars makes my brain go aggro. In the end, Three Hopes proved to be exactly what I needed. I went into Token Rambu Warriors expecting it to be an entry-level Musou game, one that would be great for newcomers to not only the franchise, but to the genre itself. When it came to Three Hopes, I expected it to be sort of a mid-level Musou game, one that would be good for longtime fans of both franchises, but might not bring anybody new to the table. I was absolutely wrong. This game is something I have been waiting for, and that's why Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes gets a thumbs up. If it wasn't for the combat that feels like the upgrade we needed from the last Fire Emblem Warriors, it would have been the story that keeps you coming back for more. Being able to command your other characters mid-battle isn't something new to a Warriors game. You've been able to do this in previous Samurai Warriors games as well as Hyrule and Fire Emblem Warriors. But you can tell that Three Hopes was designed to make you utilize this feature. I found myself sometimes thinking hard on whether it would be worth it for me to pair up my characters so I could switch classes on the fly, or if it it would be better for me to spread my characters out and take on more ground. I also love the grind of going for mastering all of the classes, building my relationships, and leveling up all of the playable characters. Sure, the game could look better, especially for the time it's released and the companies behind it, but it doesn't dampen the experience. I do wish it used the hardware to its fullest. I also wish there were a lot more variety in the stages. Like, just give me a forest, a snowy area, a castle, a nighttime stage. It's just disappointing how samey the stages look. Luckily though, all of the stages still look good and are designed so well that I don't care. I keep coming back to it over and over again. In fact, I want to get this review done and over with so I can jump back in and finish this playthrough and start the next one and repeat it again. I just want to keep playing this game, so get out there and pick this up if you haven't already. This is going to be my non-work related game for the foreseeable future. There's a reason I didn't put this up on the poll to stream the story. I just don't want to be held back to only playing this every Sunday. I want to be able to play this anytime I want. I may burn out on this, but I may burn out on all the content available to me first. Who knows? Either way, I love this game so far, and I'm gonna play the shit out of it. Anyways, everybody, thank you so much for watching my mini review of Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe for more. Also, comment below and let me know which house you picked on your first playthrough. If you'd like to help support the channel and what I do here, you can join the guild just like these awesome people that you're seeing on screen right now. You can join their names at the end of every single video for just a dollar a month over on Patreon, or you can donate in a one-time fashion over on Coffee. There are other rewards and other tiers as well, so check out the links that you see on screen, and I will see you all down in the comments.